I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the boiler attachments. If we try to recall in the last two classes, we have discussed about the fire tube and water tube boilers. And we have seen the working principle rather the operation of the boiler in particular since boilers are used to generate steam we had identified two different streams rather flow path one is this rather cycles steam water cycle another one is the coal and the combustion or products of the uh, combustion cycle. In the context of the boiler attachments we shall be discussing again rather we shall try to group those components into you know two different categories one is known as mounting another is known as accessories. So, if we try to write boiler attachment and this is having uh, mountings uh, you know sub uh, classifications that is mountings and another you know sub classification is accessories. So, you can understand that basically the components which you have discussed in last two classes those are essential components essentially for the you know uh, operation of the boiler. Now, if we try to figure out which are the components responsible for the safety operation of the boiler and there are a few components which are not directly related to the safety of the boiler and its operation, but still those components are required for the you know efficient operation of the boiler. So, now let us uh, discuss about this part briefly. So, when we talk about boiler operation all these components are attached to the boiler essentially to ensure that boiler operation should be safe. So, safety point of view a few components will be needed while for the efficient operation of the boiler, we also will be required a few components. Mountings these are the components basically these are mandatory component, mandatory component for boiler operation. Right? These components they do not directly affect the boiler performance.
boiler performance right but as i told you so there are a few components which are mandatory components for the boiler operation and without these components no boiler is certified so mountings no boiler is certified without mountings okay so these are mandatory components basically a boiler should have all these components they do not directly affect the boiler performance but basically these components are used for boiler and its operator you know safety example water level indicator pressure gauge right feed check valve fusible plug etc so these are the mountings one important thing is though someone may argue that since these components are not needed because th these components may not be needed because they do not directly affect the boiler performance but still these are required because this point is very important because we need to ensure that safety of the boiler as well as the operator of the boiler should prevail so while boiler is in operation and to ensure that mountings are mandatory and no boiler is certified without mountings next we are going to discuss about accessories accessories you know these are not mandatory component okay but these components directly affect the boiler performance these are not mandatory because a boiler can be certified even without accessories but this particular you know uh, components are needed because they directly affect the boiler performance if we go back to the previous slide you know here we have discussed about this particular issue so this classification because boiler attachment let me tell you once again so these are the components which are attached to the boiler and that we have seen when we have discussed about the fire tube and you know water tube boilers but out of these components a few components can be grouped together and those are known as mountings while the remaining components or uh, another group of another set of components can be uh, you know uh, group together and uh, this particular group is known as accessories so this classification is based on the fact that a few components which are there in the boiler they directly affect the boiler performance so basically those are needed essentially to ensure that the operation would be efficient why because we are supplying water and our main purpose is to convert water into steam in particular if we try to recall the thermodynamic cycles that we have studied we should try to get superheated steam from the boiler 
right. So, to ensure that water which is circulated through the boiler should be converted into superheated steam and to, to get it this particular aspect is very much needed to be looked at and that is called efficient operation. While safety operation is also important because you know boilers are normally operated at a high pressure and at that pressure because boiler is essentially a kind of you know closed uh, uh, vessel type to ensure the safety of the boiler most importantly the boiler operator uh, a few groups uh, a few components are attached to the boiler and those are known as mountings. So, this accessories examples include example is rather examples are superheated superheated reheater economizer econo miser so superheater reheater economizer all these are basically you know uh, the accessories. So, these are you know directly affect the boiler performance you can see from the name itself superheater we have discussed that is convective superheater and radiative superheater these two superheaters are placed inside the boiler and the entire purpose of placing these components is to get superheated steam and, and that is why you know that means we are in we are trying to increase the efficiency of the boiler right. Similarly, reheater you have seen that uh, reheating reheat cycle we have discussed the entire purpose is to you know have the entire expansion of the steam into two different stages of turbine that is high pressure stage turbine and low pressure stage turbine. So, after doing certain after doing some amount of work steam is taken again into the boiler and the steam is allowed to pass through the reheating coil. So, that steam temperature is again increased and it is again taken to the low pressure stage turbine. So, the reheater is again another uh, accessories which is needed to increase the efficiency of the cycle and finally, economizer though the this word I am introducing today I will dis I will discuss today the you know purpose of this particular component in the context of the boiler operation. So, these are the accessories. So, now let us briefly discuss about the accessories. So, you know that uh, we have discussed that superheaters whether it is a convective superheater or it is a radiative superheater these two superheaters are placed inside the boiler because the steam which you are getting from the turbine from the boiler is uh, I mean saturated even if it is saturated steam we need to take that saturated steam through the you know uh, through these superheaters to make or uh, to get the super you know superheated steam at the exit of the boiler. What about reheater we have discussed now let us briefly discuss about the economizer. So, idea is you know that we have seen in the boiler uh, the we have discussed that coal is taken and that coal is uh, taken to the combustion chamber wherein in presence of air coal you know combustion takes place. So, it is because of this combustion we are getting flue gas which is having high temperature even though that flue gas is taken either through the tube or through the cell depending on the you know uh, uh, types of boiler. So, so it you know that flue gas exchange heat with the water stream and upon releasing heat flue gas is taken through the stack and it is you know uh, it goes to the surroundings, but uh, it is very essential that uh, exit temperature of the flue gas should not be very high. Why? There are two different you know uh, reasons first is you know that if we allow high temperature of flue gas rather if we release high temperature flue gas from the boiler. So, it will increase the temperature of the surrounding air. So, it is not 
you know uh, allowed because of the env environmental issue. On the other hand, you know that high temperature flue gas we are getting at the cost of some input energy. I mean we are getting by burning coal. So, the objective should be to utilize the temperature of the flue gas to the extent possible inside the boiler. So, that the entire process can be you know uh, should be efficient. So, basically the the process efficiency will be increased which in turn will increase the efficiency of the boiler. So, the objective should be not to release flue gas which will be having high temperature because of this environmental issue. Second is the temperature of the flue gas should be utilized to increase the temperature of water even temperature of steam. Temperature of water will be definitely increased so that it will be converted into steam and finally, temperature of the steam also will be increased so that we will be getting superheated steam and this utilization of high temp temperature of flue gas should be as high as possible. So, that I mean we can increase the efficiency of the process. One way definitely we will be increasing the temper we will be utilizing the temperature of flue gas to increase the temperature of steam which is coming out from the boiler. Another way of utilizing the you know temperature of hot flue gas is to use of economizer. Let us briefly discuss about it. So, Economizer. This is again a device, a basically a type of heat exchanger, you can say, and the entire purpose of this heat, you know, device is to increase. So, if we try to draw the TS plane, so we can see that. So, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 1. So, this is P condenser and this is P boiler, right. So, you know that uh, this one is basically at the exit of the condenser and that that is the saturated liquid and that is pumped back to the boiler and this is the inlet condition of the working substance rather inlet condition of the working substance before it enters into the boiler. Now, this so 2 to 2 prime if we give name 2 prime. So, you can understand this T 2 and T 2 prime. So, this T 2 prime to T 2 this amount of sensible heating is required initially idea is that if we can use the flue gas temperature which is otherwise be leaving from the boiler and that heat we can utilize to increase the temperature of feed water. So, that this sensible heating amount can be reduced. So, this is sensible heating. So, basically idea is, so this is the hot flue gas and we also can take another stream that is feed water. So, these two streams whether these two streams will be taken following the counter flow arrangement or parallel flow arrangement that is uh, that is uh, again an important issue, but the main idea is to utilize the temperature of hot flue gas and that temperature will be taken by the feed water. So, that we can increase the feed water temperature from 2 to say 2 double prime and that 
is done using by using another device which is known as economizer. So, economizer is again a type of heat exchanger in which these two streams are allowed to pass either following counter flow arrangement or parallel flow arrangement that is depending on the requirement, but the main purpose is to utilize the temperature of hot flue gas which is leaving from the boiler and taking that heat our objective should be to increase the temperature of feed water before it enters into the boiler. So, if we can increase the temperature say now up to 2 prime before it enters into the boiler, then perhaps the sensible heating will be now T 2 prime to T 2. So, basically the amount of sensible heating required given the fact that all other conditions are remaining same is getting reduced. So, that we can increase the efficiency of the boiler and that is why the word economize economizer is coming that means, we are trying to economize the entire process. Okay. So, this is all about the economizer. We can see from today's discussion that we still can use the high temperature combustion gases. We can utilize the high temperature of the you know flue gas to increase the temperature of feed water with an objective of economize the process. So, this is another way of utilizing the high temperature of the flue gas. Another possibility of the utilization of the high temperature of the flue gas is to increase the temperature of air and that is called air preheater. So, in this context let us briefly discuss about air preheater. So, air preheater you know that air is essential for the combustion of the coal. So, when coal is taken inside the boiler we also need to have arrangement so that sufficient air will be allowed to go therein to have efficient combustion. And when air is taken for the air combustion, you know for the combustion of coal, air is preheated again you know by having one arrangement. So, this is hot flue gas and this is air. So, the temperature from the hot flue gas will be utilized to increase the temperature of air. So, that you know that heated air can be now taken for the combustion of coal. Using this process the efficiency the combustion efficiency will be increased. So, this is another way of utilizing the, utilizing the temperature of hot flue gas before it goes out from the boiler. So, these are the you know a cases basically you know the so basically this preheated air you know increases the combustion efficiency ok by how you know that if we supply preheated air for the combustion of coal, then the moisture content of the coal should be I mean the moisture which is there in the coal will be you know taken by this heat or high temperature air. So, that the combustion process the overall efficiency of the combustion process will increase and that is how this is uh, you know this, this this particular process works. So, these are this is air preheater and finally, you know coming to the superheater and reheaters. So, uh, coming to the superheaters and reheaters.
See superheaters and reheaters basically again these are high temperature and low temperature heat transfer surface in the boiler. So, superheated these are high temperature surfaces in the boiler and reheaters these are the low temperature surfaces in the boiler. So, uh, now these reheaters are not very low temperature. So, it is better not to place it uh, in the uh, low heater low temperature rather it is still can be uh, placed as the high temperature. So, these two are superheaters and reheaters are the high temperature surface surfaces in, in the boiler. You know that uh, for the superheater you know input is saturated steam whether it is dry saturated steam or wet saturated steam, but output is superheated steam. For the reheaters as well, you know that uh, if we try to recall after doing some work steam is taken to the boiler and steam is allowed to pass through the reheating coil. So, input is again saturated steam, but output is superheated steam. Okay. So, basically you know for the reheater the saturated steam is taken from the turbine. So, this is the difference you know steam comes from turbine okay. but here steam comes from steam drum. Okay. And finally, you know this economizer that we have discussed in the last slide, this is you know low temperature surfaces. right because after releasing heat to the water and again to the saturated steam the temperature of the flue gas is again further extracted to increase the temperature of feed water in the economizer and so you can understand the temperature so economy superheater is again a type of heat exchanger reheater is also heat exchanger economizer is also a surface heat exchanger so but the temperature at which these devices are you know uh, working is not same. So, superheaters and reheaters are basically high temperature surfaces and reconomizer is the low temperature surfaces in the boiler. Okay. Now, uh, basically all these are attachments we shall be now discussing about the superheaters because you know uh, 
superheaters you know play a crucial role for the you know I can say the overall efficiency of the plant because the entire objective to get the superheated steam. But before going to discuss about the classification of superheated and also their arrangement, uh, let us also briefly discuss about another two different types of attachment that is called regenerative heaters. So, regenerative heaters you have seen that why I am discussing because we are discussing about the boiler attachments. So, we have discussed about closed type feed water heater and open type feed water heater. Again whether it is open type feed water heater or it is a closed type feed water heater, it is essentially a type of heat exchanger in which two different streams are allowed to pass in an open type they directly they are you know I mean these two streams mix together in that particular device in the closed type two different streams are not allowed to mix together. So, in these regenerative heaters you know steam bleeding in is done from turbine right. So, this is regenerative heaters and finally, another one another important attachment is de aerator. De aerator. Now, I am first time introducing this word de aerator you can understand from the name itself to de aerate. So, to remove air to remove air from where. So, de aerator these are used in steam power plants these devices are used to extract dissolved air from water. Okay. And this deaerator is classified into two different categories one is called primary deaerator another type is called secondary deaerator okay so primary deaerator you know that we have discussed in the condenser we are taking air we are taking coolant right so, this uh, and condenser are operated at a pressure which is less than the atmospheric pressure. So, chances are there of having air leakage into the condenser. If air leaks into the condenser and if it mix with the condensate so, is this this deteriorate the condenser performance I shall be discussing in one of the next one of in one of the classes of this particular course, but this dissolved air should be removed from the condenser otherwise chances are there that in the condenser heat transfer rate will be affected and if the dissolved air is again pumped back to the boiler you know that that air will try to create another problem from the operational point of view. So, basically you know that primary deaerators are used in condenser. So, primary 
DAR it is used to remove you know air used to extract air dissolve in steam in condenser right and in the secondary deaerator you know that uh, we are extract we are bleeding steam from the turbine and that steam is now allowed to mix with the you know condensate which is pumped so by mixing these two different streams we can remove air so secondary deaerator is a regenerative heater so secondary deaerator is again a regenerative heater secondary this is basically regenerative heater. Okay. So, that means, the air which is present in the condensate as I told you that condens are condensers are operated at a pressure which is less than atmospheric pressure. So, chances will be there of having air leakage into the condenser. If air leaks into the condenser, that air will disturb the heat transfer, it will affect the heat transfer performance by having a thin film of air in, in the in the in the in the condenser tube. And not only that, that if air dissolve with the condenser, that will again create a problem when that condenser is pumped back to the boiler. So, object you know our objective should be to remove air which is dissolved in steam in the condenser and primary deaerators are used to serve that part particular purpose. And secondary deaerator basically regenerative heater. So, condensate which is coming from the condenser is still having some dissolve so air within it. So, to extract the dissolve air which is done you know that steam is extracted or bleeded from the turbine and that you know steam which is bleeding from the turbine is allowed to mix with this condensate and air is removed extracted air is removed. So, basically secondary deaerator is a regenerative heater that we have discussed in the context of open type feed water heater. So, now basically you know uh, we next will discuss about the classification of super heater and also we shall see that what are the different types of super heaters are used typically in the boiler and their arrangement. We shall discuss this particular aspect in the next class. To summarize today what we have discussed is that we have discussed about the boiler attachments, we have tried to discuss about the objectives of several components which are attached to the boiler. These components can be grouped together and one particular group is known as mountings which are mandatory components no boiler is certified without mountings though these components do not directly affect the boiler performance. But these components are essential for the safety operation of boiler as well as its operator safety. Another components, another a few components can be grouped together and this particular group is known as accessories. Though accessories are not the mandatory components, but these components directly affect the boiler performance and so these components are very much needed because our objective should be to increase the efficiency, to increase the process efficiency. Then we have discussed about the accessories like superheaters and reheaters. We have introduced economizer, which is again another important device in the context of boiler, operator, boiler operation. And finally, we have discussed about the regenerative heaters and deaerator, 
because these devices are again important for the you know complete operation of the boiler. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class with the classification of superheater and their operations. Thank you. Thank you.